How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, you know, living the dream. Okay. On a recent Thursday evening at Margaret Keating School in Klamath, a couple dozen people assembled to discuss food. Specifically, the availability of affordable, nutritious food for people living in southern Del Norte. The panel discussion in public forum was hosted by Wild Rivers Outpost Crescent City Bureau Chief Jessica Sainar and USC Community Engagement Editor Danielle Fox. Panelists included former Yurok Tribal Chair Susan Maston, Bridget Norris, former Food Programs Coordinator for the Community Food Council, Josh Norris, Planner and Project Manager with the Yurok Tribe Planning Division, and Aristea Salisbury, consultant with Greenway Partners, there to discuss similar issues and how they've been addressed up in Hoopa. Over the past six months, Sainar, under the aegis of a USC Annenberg grant, has been researching and writing on the plight of Klamath residents when it comes to food. With limited local resources and 20 treacherous miles of US 101 between them and the nearest supermarket, the folks in Klamath live in what experts call a food desert. Sainar explored this issue with local residents and policymakers, and you can read the four resulting articles on the Wild Rivers Outpost page at lostcoastoutpost.com. They're also on the Wild Rivers Outpost Facebook page. As panelists and the public gathered in the gym at Margaret Keating, I spoke with Sainar about her articles and her hopes for the evening's discussion. So Jessica Sainar, tell us about tonight. What's planned? I'm hoping to um, educate people outside the community and maybe the community members here on what what the residents of Klamath feel is their greatest need when it comes to accessing fresh healthy food. Mm -hmm. And this grew out of the the work with your fellowship and it the did. articles that you wrote, right? It how, did, yes. How many times have you been down here at, at forums or tabling at events trying to, to, to um, talk to the folks in Klamath? I want to say since the beginning of April, I've been ha I've been down here uh, between April and June every week, mm -hmm. so weekly, and then um, between June and now probably biweekly or every every three weeks or so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it it ranges from from tabling, it ranges or or appearing at events or just just being down here to talk to people. Mm -hmm. What sort of a response have you gotten from the community down here? The community has been absolutely awesome. Um, they want the wider Del Norte community to realize that they are here and that they have needs that are just as important as everybody else's needs and just as basic. I mean, what's more basic than being able to feed your family? Right. Um, so, yeah, they've been very supportive and very helpful and very, very, uh, I want to say gracious and mm -hmm. in, in welcoming and letting me share and, and sharing their stories with me and there's some so. remarkable stories there are a lot of people in your articles too there are people who, who have uh, found their way through this issue in, in all kinds of ways they know how to solve the problem mm -hmm. I think what they need is for people that can help them help them solve it to pay attention mm -hmm. what do you hope folks leave tonight with I hope they leave with a sense that these are that the people that live in Klamath are no different from them and that their interests are just as important to advocate and to fight for at the state level or the local county level or the national level or even just locally as as somebody who lives in Gaskey or Hayuchi or or Crescent City Standing under a basket at the back of the gym, dressed in his signature dirty boots and work pants, I found local educator and permaculturalist Ben Zometa, who, among his many other undertakings in Del Norte, is the site coordinator for the verdantly successful food forest at the College of the Redwoods campus in Crescent City. So Ben Zometa, why are you here tonight? I'm here to learn more about what the community wants for, for, the, for uh, both everything related to food security and food uh, a, turning towards abundance and, and uh, in my role as the food forest site developer uh, really I need to be catering to what people want and what people will find useful and, and helpful so really it's here I'm here to listen. Over the next hour or so the panelists discuss the many problems Klamath residents face when it comes to securing food. The lack of a retail food store and the ancillary economic hurdle of driving nearly 50 miles round trip to shop in Crescent City state regulations that hamper traditional Yurok food gathering, the economics of scale and the related impact on prices and availability of fresh produce in the tribal-run Peimei market, and the stresses climate change has brought to bear on the salmon population. 
Also discussed was the work of the Hoopa Valley Tribe in securing and renovating a dilapidated Rays market in Hoopa. Working with Greenway Partners, a Humboldt-based planning firm, the tribe sought community input in designing and building a tribal-owned grocery store. The store opened earlier this year, and while the panelists agreed such a solution might not be scalable to a community as small as Klamath, it does offer a hopeful picture of how a native community can address its own food insecurity. After the panel concluded, I spoke with panelists Bridget Norris and Aristea Salisbury about the strengths inherent in traditional native culture and how those strengths inform the issue of food. Here's Bridget Norris. One of the strengths um, is really one of the ways this community is getting by. Um, in your culture, when someone comes to my home, the way I let them know that they're welcome is the first thing I do is offer them something to eat and drink. To turn that down is very disrespectful. And in fact, if I don't offer you something, as soon as you come into my home, you know you're not welcome. So food is that central. It's part of, um, you know, no one goes hungry. When you go into any Yurok home, you have the security of knowing you're going to be fed. Anyone that comes into my Yurok home, I'm going to feed them no matter how little I might have at that time. We share what we have. That's our way. That's our culture. So that's already being practiced. I mean, if you listen to what the other panelists were saying, you know, people who live out in the Glen especially, um, they can't walk to the store for one small item that they're out of, and they're not going to make the 45-minute drive to Crescent City for it. So they go to their neighbor. And then the other part of that that... Georgiana talked about was it's reciprocal, it's give and take, there's balance. So I'm going to give you some of my food when I come to ask you for some of yours. It's a payment. That's that's the Yurok economy, the traditional way, you know, pre-contact. It's trading, it's bartering, it's compensation. And so... And sometimes it isn't even such an immediate thing. It's knowing this season I have this, next season you'll have that, or Mm -hmm. something happened, but I know that there are people around here who are going to support me. Uh, I think about it a lot. I I always wonder about the balance between what is traditional and then what was essential to survive colonization, you know, in, in the way that communities band together because it also happens in rural communities where there just aren't the resources. You rely on each other in a very different way. Um, and I, what I love about the tribal communities here locally especially is that they've just leaned into that completely and say, okay, how are we going to make this work for us? Um, I, think, I think there's a, just a different way of addressing the challenges collectively. To stay abreast of this issue, join the Facebook group Food for Thought, administered by Jessica Sainar, and you can read her series of articles on food insecurity in Klamath on the Wild Rivers Outpost Facebook page, as well as at lostcoastoutpost.com. For KFUG Community News, I'm Paul Kritz.